Hey everyone, me Kevin here. The last 24 hours have been absolute insanity. The polls were a disaster as usual, and now we're left wondering what is gonna happen? What does it even mean for stocks? What does it mean for stimulus? Can we just get everything kind of put together in one video? And well, that's what this is. But first, uh, let me start by saying, Economist, y'all really screwed up. Y'all really screwed up big this time. Now, The Economist is, uh, well, they're a news publication. They've got a really good magazine. I enjoy The Economist magazine. But these were some of their predictions and I just want to point these out. Look at this. Florida right here, 80% chance it would go to Biden. This was a Trump state by a pretty substantial margin. The New York Times shows that Florida went to Trump with 51.2% versus 47.8% for Biden. But look at this, 95% chance that Biden gets Pennsylvania. When we actually look at Pennsylvania, Trump's leading by over 3%, 3.1% to be exact. Nevada ended up being the biggest competitive state along with Wisconsin and Miss Michigan. All three of these were supposed to be 95% Biden, 98% Wisconsin, 98% Michigan, uh, and, and they're not even over here in this competitive box. Uh, and, and when they put all of this stuff together with their projections, look at this. They put this map together and said that by election day, Trump only had a 3% chance of victory. And it's basically been just declining during the entire pandemic. And I wonder, like, is, is this somebody just at a computer going, I kind of feel a little worse about Trump today. Or is there actually science in this stuff? Because it seems to be wrong uh, now for the second election cycle in a row. It's, it's really frustrating. Now, I hate to bag on it. But when you say, look, 95% to 98%, three or four times in a row, and you're wrong on all of those states, maybe there's a problem with the collection methods here. But here's the thing. Biden was just called for Michigan and Wisconsin. Trump's got lawsuits over here in Wisconsin already going because there's only a margin of 21,000 ballots. Over here in Michigan, we've got a little bit of a larger spread of about 120,000 ballots. So we're not too worried about even talking about Michigan. Right now, the focus is on Wisconsin, although you can bet there are going to be lawsuits in all of these. But the bigger one actually might end up being Nevada, or as some say, Nevada. I never know which one's right, so I say both. Anyway, over here, we've got Joe Biden in the lead by 8,000 ballots. And the next dump? is Thursday at 12 p.m. They're just going to go, Poop, here's the new data. That is, it could, who wins this election could literally come down to Nevada, which which is incredible because you definitely have Californian flight going over to, uh, to this state as well. Uh, and over here, it's presumed that a lot of Californians help push Arizona to a blue state. Uh, well, potential victory here. Though there's still, you know, Trump and, uh, and Trump's campaign staff still believes they have a shot of uh, getting Arizona. So uh, this is what we've got right now. And Trump and his legal team have also been basically begging for additional campaign funding after the election now to fund the legal battles coming up. And this has now led Biden's campaign staff to start begging for more funding to fund the legal battles coming up. Like, I thought campaign fundraising would be over after Election Day. No, now we're going to fight over what is considered a legal and legitimate ballot. This is why we also have in Wisconsin Donald Trump requesting a, an entire ballot recount, which that's not even possible until December 1st. The last time we did that was in 2016, and after a recount, Trump got an extra 300 votes, which were 21,000 votes apart here, approximately, just a little over 20K. And so this is where we really have to start wondering, okay, what is a legal and legitimate ballot, and how is this going to affect stocks or stimulus and our lives going forward? Well, look, legal and legitimate ballots, according to the Trump staff, are ballots that are not duplicate votes, not spoiled, aka they're not damaged, like burned or spilled coffee and you can't read them anymore, or there are those that came in potentially after the deadline. And see, the deadline aspect is actually what might end up being the most tricky. See, what happens when you take mail, like a check to pay your taxes, and you take that piece of mail and you throw it in the mailbox before your mail person comes to collect the mail? and you gotta pay your bills on, let's say, April 15th for taxes, well, the post office collects that, takes it back to their sorting machine, it gets stamped as being postmarked April 15th, 
and the US government says, hey, as long as your check was postmarked by that date, it's considered to be in the possession of the federal government. Therefore, it is a timely payment. In fact, a lot of things go by the postmark date. We do that in real estate as well. If you mail your rent on the first, it's technically still on time, even if it comes on the second or third. And so the big question now though is, does that apply to ballots? Now, Joe Biden and Democrats say the answer is yes. Donald Trump says the answer is no. And this might be because, well, we already know that mail-in ballots tend to skew towards a favor of Democrats. And right now, every vote matters. Joe Biden says he's confident that he will win and seeks to unify the country. He calls it, after all, the United States of America. And he reiterated that. Except we seem more divided now than we ever have before. So what does all this drama actually mean for us as individuals? On a broader scheme, it definitely seems very dramatic, but what does it mean to us? Well, the bigger factor might not necessarily be who's president. It might actually be more focused on the Senate. Right now, we've got Senate races in Michigan, Alaska, Georgia, North Carolina, and a special election in Georgia that are being hotly fought tooth and nail to get the final vote counts in. Now, well, this is where the Senate comes in. We have five seats left to determine the balance of power in the Senate. Right now, we're 48 for Republicans and 47 for Democrats. With five seats, the balance of power could sway. However, right now, it seems that we're most likely to end up with a situation where we've got 51 Republicans and 49 Democrats. This could change. We might even end up at a 50-50 margin. But either way we slice it, we're probably destined for at least another two years of grid lock in Congress. And what does this mean for us? Well, little expectations of anything getting done in Congress would be a good way to start. But when it comes to stocks, actually probably more relative calm. See, when it comes to stocks, the stock market doesn't like it when there's a lot of change. And there's one thing that doesn't happen a lot of in Congress when there's gridlock, and that's change. Think about it. If Biden wins, corporate tax rates probably can't get through because the Senate's controlled by Republicans. Regular tax hikes, financial transactions tax hikes, other large changes to healthcare benefits or programs probably won't be able to get through without bipartisan support. So this means Congress is likely going to sit in a stalemate for the next two years. And like I said, ironically, this is good for stocks because there's less risk. There's more danger when one party controls everything and slam dunks policies that could be really detrimental to certain industries. And then tomorrow, we are widely expecting the Federal Reserve to come out at the end of their meeting again and basically just tell us they will be as accommodative as they need to to our recovery, aka we will rely on the Fed for as much trickle-down support as possible, which basically means if you own real estate and stocks, you're doing good. And if you don't, you screwed which really sucks because, well, Congress sucks. But I'm not sure that I would jump into the insane greenery of the market today. See, outside of all of this election drama, the Washington Post just reported that COVID cases just came in at over 102,000 cases for November 4th. That'll be the first time ever we broke 100,000 cases in one day. And if this is the beginning of the exponential growth curve that Dr. Scott Gottlieb, the former FDA commissioner, warns us about, we have some concerns. The stock market might actually get a whole lot more nervous all over again in probably a few weeks. So in my opinion, buckle down right now, put some cash aside. If you went shopping before the election, congratulations, you did what I did and what a lot of us on the channel did, went shopping while fear was high. Right now, things are ironically, even though we don't have an answer, kind of chill and the stock market's loving it. Now, when it comes to stimulus, hopefully, Hopefully, we'll see a compromise before the end of the year. We've got a big fiscal cliff coming with the budget running out December 11th. So maybe we'll see this sort of dual package get negotiated either separately or together. But for right now, let's focus on building up enough cash so that way we can invest in stocks the next time we get some blood in the markets, so to speak. And in the meantime, let's see what happens to Nevada tomorrow at 12 p.m. It'll be interesting to see. That's going to be a big move. And with ballots only 8,000 apart, if Biden gets a slam dunk lead tomorrow, we might end up with a President Biden. Subject, of course, to the lawsuits, which could drag on for months. If Donald Trump takes over, well, then all eyes will probably fall back on the rest of the states. Is he going to get Georgia for sure? Is he going to get Pennsylvania for sure? We'll find out soon. Thanks so much for watching, and folks, we'll see you next time.